Welcome to the episode 5 of the Ellis Highlight Road Podcast. This is your host, Brandon Ellis, for another week. Um, the last week of the last dance reviews, um, the last two episodes came out. Um, this is the first thing we're going to get into. Horace Grant interview that came out uh, along with the last dance, uh, courtesy of ESPN Chicago uh, 1000. Um, ESPN 1000 Chicago. Um this is the next few next topic after that, so it's gonna go back to back. Um, after that, Alden the Alden Smith news uh, that you may have saw um, with the Cowboys. He got reinstated, and then um, a top five list this week will be the f- final thing I'll talk about um, this week. Um, just waiting for some other news to come out. I might do an emergency podcast later in the week. Um, if there's more news about the COVID situation, um, COVID-19 situation about uh, updates about sport, like basketball coming back and every, anything like that. So, um, the facilities are starting to open for NFL, bat, NBA, but some, you know, it's where it's half the league right now. So I'm not really going to delve into that that much. So. With that being said, let's get into the last dance. Um, probably the best docu series, uh, documentary, sports documentary. Um, one of the best ones I've ever seen. Um, probably the one of the best ones ever done. Um, it's up there. Uh, Jason Hare uh, did a really good job with it. Um, I just like the story flow a lot. There's some things that people are harping on him about. Um, and harping on the team about, uh, especially with Scotty Pippen's portrayal of the in the doc, um, you know, I, in their opinion is valid in that sense. I just, I don't know. I mean, if it's Jordan controlled, what do you expect? Um, from my, you know, and I, I kind of expected to see Scotty in a better light in a little, you know, a little bit, but you know, there was. You know, obviously, if you watch the doc, Scotty was, you know, not the best teammate in some of the situations in 98, uh, 97, 98, and then, you know, from there. But at the same time, I don't know why the 94 playoff moment where it was one, he sat out for the final 1.7 seconds. You know, Michael was a fan at that point. He wasn't on the team. Uh, he was playing baseball. So, I don't know why that's in there. Um, I guess... You know, to capsulate the story about the Bulls a little bit. But I agree with Horace Grant in that sense. Like, you don't, like, why would you put that moment in there, um, per se? But, you know, I like, I like, overall, I love the doc. Um, like I said, it's just, obviously, people are going to have some nitpicks, and that's what happens. So the last two episodes talked about the 98. Eastern Conference Finals, the ninety set. The episode nine talked about the Eastern Conference Finals in ninety eight, and then the ninety seven Finals with against Utah, uh, flu game. <laughs> that was probably the best, uh, the best part of that episode. Of that episode, uh, one of the best parts of that episode, if not the best part, was going over the flu game um, and what happened with the flu game. Uh, detail from detail. Even though the pizza delivery guy has come out and said that's not true. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's two sides to every story. So we we won't know the full truth of it until, you know, um, of it. But you got to, I don't know. I don't know who to believe in that situation. But Michael was sick. We all, knew, we all saw Michael sick. So either way, he was sick. Because of that game, and if you're, if you're hungover, you're not throwing up the night of. Like you're not throwing up the night of. You're feeling the effects the next day. So I don't think um, Michael was um, hungover per se. So maybe it's food poisoning. Maybe it's food-like symptoms. But anyway, 38 on that night at, when you're sick like that, like phew, that's why he's one of the greatest of all time. To go to basketball, the greatest athlete of all, one of the greatest athletes of all time. Um, so yeah, that's that's episode nine. Then ten gets into 
the finals of 98 and um, how it, you know, the drama of how he built, of how, how Hare built up that, that series and everything like that was really good. And how it led up to the, the last shot. And every I loved everything, how it led up to the last shot. That he, uh, Jason Hare called that sequence being down being down three with like 40 seconds, 42 seconds to go, the greatest 42 seconds in basketball, which I probably would have to agree. Um, because if you look at basketball as a whole as recently, right, um, you had the 2016 finals with LeBron in that game seven, um, the block and the shot by Kyrie. Um, people will say that moment. And I would tend to agree with that being the greatest, probably the most competitive last two minutes of a game. Um, especially a win to go home game. But the greatest individual moment, the greatest individual performance in a finals game goes to Michael in that last shot game in 98. In Utah. Because he gets the ball. Takes it down. Quick layup. Executes that perfectly. Then the next possession with Utah. Comes up. Sneaks behind Malone. Gets the steal. Has the ball. Dribbles out. Then does the famous crossover. On Brian Russell. For the last shot. Now. People are going to say. Oh he pushed off. He pushed off. But if you watch the doc. Michael knew that Brian Russell would played on his tiptoes on defense. He played on his tiptoes. So he knew if he can get his momentum one way, the way he did, and then if he got his momentum that way, he had him. And basically that's what he did. The hand is there as a like the feel where he's going, not really pushing off. You know? Because I don't believe Michael with one hand doesn't have he doesn't have Thanos' strength, people. Like he doesn't have Thanos' strength to push him all the way to the paint. That way. I don't think that happened. I think it was just Byron Russell's momentum going that far. Maybe it was a n- little nudge, maybe. But I think it was just, you know, Michael being Michael and how great he was. It wasn't the Reggie Miller push off in the Eastern Conference Finals earlier. It wasn't that push off. Um because that's a push off. What Michael did, that's just a great move. And you can disagree with me in the comments if you want to. I will show, like, just enlighten you some more probably if you want to talk to me about that. But I feel like it was Byron Russell's momentum that caused the last shot to happen. And then the famous end to this doc, uh, which I like to hear, Michael said... If they brought the team back together, would have been seven. Would have been seven. And I tend to agree. Uh, we all know 99, 98-99 was the lockout shortened season where the Spurs won um, with some help with uh, Purdue and Steve Kerr, I think. Uh, mainly Steve Kerr was on that team along with Timmy Duncan and Robinson. Um, so if... If they got the team back together, you know, with Pippen and Phil and Dennis and Michael and Ron Harper and everybody in Ku Coach and everybody was still on that team from 98, um, 97, 98, uh, and they went for it seven, they would have got seven. I, I would contend they would have got seven, but, um, that wasn't Jerry Krause's decision, uh, you know. That wasn't in the cards because Jerry Krause wanted to get rid of Phil at that point. Um, the relationship was un, unattainable, unfixable, um, wasn't wasn't going to be fixed. And you know, it's just unfortunate that he took you know he took something that could have happened away. Um, it's just unfortunate, you know. Would it have helped? You know. Uh, you know, would it have been like one of those things where Michael got, you know, would have got seven if he kept playing. 
Um, I don't know. But he wanted to play for someone else, you know. He didn't want to play for anyone else. He wanted to play for Phil. And that's what it was. Now, I would argue if they did the one more year thing and they somehow won, you wouldn't have the Lakers dynasty. Um, that you have. Uh, you wouldn't have the Shaq and Kobe. Um, because Phil wouldn't be there. Uh, so... So that's the thing. You you lose one dynasty to maintain the dynasty from the nineties, or you are you are we glad as basketball fans we had some parity and got the Laker, you know, the new Shaq and Kobe Lakers back uh, dynasty. Um, a little bit, um, but it lacked the mid two thousands is where the parity was for the most part, and it's where you know a lot of teams got an opportunity. Different teams you saw, like the Nets and the Pistons and the Spurs again and the Celtics, you know, those teams. So it's interesting to see and interesting to debate, which leads me to another debate that's been going around since Sunday and the final two episodes came out, the Horace Grant interview. Now, this will take us back to the Jordan Rules, Jordan, Jordan Rules episode in the middle where Jordan said, Horace was a snitch, and he snitched to Sam Smith. Horace said that was lies, lies, lies. Uh, I didn't do that. And he would go out on to say Jordan, calling Jordan a snitch when he brought up the cocaine incident in the fir- in the first episode of the doc, um, his rookie year. Now, I don't think that it, it was right for Horace to do that. Obviously, uh, I just don't think that's right for a guy to do that. But I get the reason why he did it um, a little bit because you got to defend your honor somehow. And there's something in the doc that points, you know, that you can use. Like, why would you bring that up 30 years later, you know, and in the doc? So, yeah. So it's one of those things that Horace did. Horace is smart that way. Um, I just don't agree with it. But at the same time, it's like, you know, it's out there. Um, so we might get a response from Jordan. We might not, um, knowing Jordan probably won't, but you know, it's just one of those things that's going to go in the, you know, in the limelight now with the doc and might taint the doc to some people, but it's not going to take the doc, doc to me. So, uh, let me know if it takes doc for you guys as well down below and, and message it, you know, Facebook comments or what our YouTube comments. Just let me know what you're thinking of, like, the whole doc as a whole. Um, you know, the Horace Grant stuff. And that wraps my stuff on Last Dance, unless something else comes out. Uh, tonight, 9 p.m., they have Game 6 on ESPN, if you want to watch it. Um, on Via the uh, film, like, from the technology of The Last Dance. So it's a unique, high-def look at Game 6. Um, so, if you want to watch that, I probably, I'll probably catch it, um, I'll probably catch it, but, um, sometime, I don't know if I'm going to watch it tonight, live, but if I'll catch it, I'll catch it, um, sometime, um, uh, just to look at the, it'd be interesting to look at that game again, and feel the drama of it, and today, you know, so, it's interesting, so, with that being said, let's get into some NFL news, um, Alden Smith, um, former 49ers defensive end, Raiders defensive end, who's been out of the league since 2015, officially got reinstated, and he will be playing for the Dallas Cowboys um, in 2020. The thing is, he's 30 years old, hasn't played for three or four years. Two, he's overweight now, 285, according to Ed Warder. Uh, ESPN's Ed Warder. He's uh, officially 285 now. Um, he when he was playing, he was like 260. So he might he should be able to get back down to his playing weight. But the fact that he haven't played for professional football in almost five years, I just don't think that that's gonna be a good signing for Dallas. When especially the guy they were targeting in the draft was KB on Chase on from LSU. But when CD Lamb fell down to him. You know, they took him, which is smart from Dallas. I'm still maintaining it's smart for Dallas because 
if if the Eagles got CD Lamb, you know, it'd been interesting. More interesting in the context of who's the better offense. Um it's still it's still an interesting debate of who's the better offense, but um it would have been even more so even more closer to like the national media and the fans. Uh, not Eagles fans, but other fans, right? So um basically but back to Alden Smith. Uh, I'm glad that he got his life together as a person. Um everything like that, he got everything handled so he can resume his you know, get back to his NFL career. But I'm gonna say this what can go wrong will go wrong in Dallas Nation. So every time it's Dallas. I'm going to go back to it. It's Dallas. Dallas will find a way to let you down. <laughs> Dallas fans. Now, and mom, if you're watching this episode, sorry. I know I know you hate when I do that to you. But it's what can go wrong, will go wrong. And I'm happy for, you know, Alden Smith. Um, and, you know, it's one of those things. It, it's interesting. Um it's going to be an interesting season coming up. That's all I'm going to say uh, about it. But when we get more news about the season, we'll get more news about the season. It's going to be it's going to be balling. Uh, we're going to. I hope football gets to playing because. But I hope football is played on time. That's all I'm going to say about it. Um, yeah. Um, now let's get to the top five list. Um, I kind of spoiled what it was going to be when I was talking about the flu game. Uh, it's going to be top five Jordan moments. Tied back into the last dance a little bit since it just ended. So I just wanted to do, you know, get my top five Jordan moments out there and out of the way. So number five for me, uh, 92 Dream Team gold medal game. Um, you know, that just caps it encapsulated everything that dream team was and that's why I, I put it at five because it's not just one moment it's just the, it's the whole dream team so that's five four winning his first championship in 91 um i think our, 91 you know 90 90 91 season i think that's you know winning your first championship should be on a high on the list and seeing him cry in front of you know, cry with the Larry O'Brien trophy in his hand and his dad to his side. Um, you know, it's a great moment. You know, great moment. And so that's my number four moment. Three is 96. Winning on Father's Day after his dad's murder. Uh, that game, you know, doing he he did in Chicago. Winning on Father's Day for his dad. And, you know, having the speech with Imam Rashad afterwards, um, that moment was captured pretty well in the last dance. And in the last dance, and that's why it soared up for me in this list um, ever since Sunday. Or ever since, you know, I saw the episode last week. So, 96, you know, 96 finals game. Yeah, yeah. Father's Day moment, you know, capturing the championship on Father's Day. Two, so we we don't know what two moments it is. Flu game, last shot. Um, I'm gonna go flu game at two. Um, it's close, but flu game is one of the more iconic games ever from Jordan. But it's just it's last shot number one for me. It's just when you look at the whole 42 seconds leading up to the shot, when they're down 86-83. And Michael gets a quick layup. And you see that nowadays and p teams will foul right away, right? The Bulls didn't do that. They let it, they let the clock wind, right, down one. And they let it wind, they let it wind, it brought the tension. Then Michael comes out of nowhere, gets the steal, goes the other way, winds the clock down, winds the clock down until five, about six seconds left, seven, six seconds left, goes. Gets the crossover, the famous crossover, and the famous shot with five seconds left to win his final championship. So that's that's my top five uh, Jordan moments. And 
the final things I'll talk about Jordan unless I do a Space Jam review sometime in the near future, um, which might happen, uh, which might happen. So keep an eye on that. Uh, so have my feelings on Space Jam, maybe on the podcast. Uh, a couple other lists I could do too. It's top five, uh, top sports movies. If you want to hear that, um, anything, just let me know down below. Leave a like, subscribe if you like, if you want to. I um, understand that you know I've been redundant with the Last Dance, but it's you know, one of the only things on right now, and it's just a popular topic to talk about. So leave a like, subscribe, comment down below whether list you want to get me into or get into. Um, I'll think, you know, let you know, and peace out, stay safe, and stay healthy.